Roll call, please. Mrs. Bartomoli? Here. Mrs. O'Hara? Here. Mr. Ogier? Here. Mr. Zawinski? Present. Mr. Vatney? Here. Just so that everyone is aware, I was contacted by the chair of the school committee. <clears throat> they aired not posting the meeting today. Um, so they cannot have a quorum at this meeting. And I'll assume, Jim, that there are not more than three people on this connection right now. Um, that when no one's in violation of this. So what the solicitor, our solicitor said is that as long as more than three people don't participate, um, we're okay. So if they, I know that there are a number of committee members uh, that are viewing it, but not participating. Our solicitor has a different opinion that if four people are on the Zoom meeting, then you have a quorum. But it, it would be similar to a, uh, a public hearing where there is more than four at the public hearing, uh, but that four people wouldn't be speaking. It's, if you, if you'd the, add, solicitor, if you, the solicitor was clear with me that we, if you have more than three members there, I will, I will ask, I will ask if um, uh, members can drop off so that I can make a presentation. It'll be recorded um, and uh, they can view it at a future time. Is that okay? I'm just giving you the advice I was given that no, that you cannot have a quorum because you didn't post the meeting. And if, because it's Zoom and if you're on, if you're on the connection and you're participating in the meeting, even anything. Is David, is David there now or no? David? I, I think Jim and Lombardi brought up a good point. If we were in a very large room and it was a public hearing and they were not sitting with one another, I, I don't know that it would be a violation, but we got to go by what Mr. Uh, Solicitor Igliosi told us. It's posted as a joint meeting, Mr. Zwinski. That's the issue. If it was our meeting and four people were there, it wouldn't be <laughs> true, but the way it was posted, it, Fran, Fran. Hold on, let me just, I don't wanna. That's been described uh, by the other experts. David, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to um, weigh in here. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm concerned about what they call a rolling quorum, uh, Jim. Um, obviously, if you're gonna record it and they view it later, um, I guess that, you know, that's a, a fine distinction, but they cannot have a discussion among themselves, obviously. Right. And, um, you know, you've got to be careful that people aren't weighing in during this meeting. I agree with you. And, and they, uh, they have been asked not to weigh in, you know, or at least the majority has not, will not weigh in. Right. Um, I, I mean, out of an abundance of caution, if you could ask that only three of you make the presentation, I just would feel more comfortable. I, mean, I had a long discussion with the attorney general about trying to find a way around this technical technicality, which I, for lack of posting, uh, and I okay, just, well, we'll I'm ask. Concerned, well, I'm just concerned for, for the school committee. I wouldn't want you to have to be facing a, a violation, uh, Mr. Chairman. That's all. Thank you. So, if you, you can take, Mark, is no, it okay sorry. if I ask some school committee members to drop off? I would just ask you to do that out of abundance of even though I know you've got your own advice and your own solicitor. I just don't want, I, I just. Fair enough. Fair enough All right. I'm sorry to, sorry to weigh in that way, but. Fran, do you mind? No, not at all. Have a good night. Thank you. I think that drops us. Just the, just the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary now? Well, uh, yeah. Um. Paul. I'm still here, guys. But, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you, Mr. Chair, what you want me to do. Well, I, I think for, just for ease, um, so one, you know, somebody else does need to, to get off. Um, okay. So if you don't mind. Uh, no. I, but, again, I, I feel bad asking people to get off on a public meeting. So um, your call. No, no, I understand. Um, 
No, I, I completely understand. And if, if there's anything you need, you can just text me. And if, if the town council wants me to come back for anything, I, I'm more than happy to. I did tour Hollowell earlier this week, so I can speak to that too. But, you know, I'm around. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank Good night, you. folks. Okay. Mr. President. All right. The only item we have on our agenda is discussion by council about other action regarding the allotment of bond funds related to the Hallowell school property. Um, and Ms. Lombardi, you said you would have a presentation. Yes. For us. Um, I sent around, uh, I emailed at least um, a link to some documents. Um, if uh, You want me to put it up? Uh, if you could, that would be great. Yeah. Is that the one no. page that you sent out? 511-2020? No, uh, there's a link to, to a, a number of different pages. Okay. I'll make sure I do the right one. When did you send that link out? Uh, just recently. Um, I made it so Jim could share too, if it's easier since he knows what documents it is. Whatever you guys feel is easiest. Jim and Lombardi, that was an email you sent? Please? Uh, you sent that as an email attachment? Yes, this is Google Drive one. Okay. I'm opening it up now. You only sent it at 646 today. Yes. Can you see it? Uh, we can see the your screen. We can't see what the... We see the email, but not the file. Really? Okay. All right, I, I've opened it. I, I mean, I have it. But what are you gonna, we're going to go off our uh, screen, our view. Is that what we're doing? If Cynthia just clicks the link that on the screen that she's on, it should pop up. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do on. have. There it is. Okay. I'm on uh, what Mr. Lombardi sent us. So I'll explain the documents. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, you know, make an argument outside of these documents. But I put these documents in here to show that, I mean, this is going back to 2015, September 19th. So what the bond should be used for. Um, at that point, uh, they, they were planning on decommissioning the severally deteriorated Hallowell Elementary Schools to avoid an estimated $3 million shortfall. And that the funds, if you look up, ought to be used. Uh, this is uh, a quarter of the uh, General Assembly um, um, bond language that the bonds can be used and it's, it's up on the, on the first line. Uh, but one of them, you know, it's, it's North Smithfield elementary school, middle school, high school, the Andrews school, um, et cetera. Um, so that's what the $4.3 million was at least initially used for. And, and, you know, going back to that time, I believe the initial estimate for us to do what we had to do was actually 5 million but um, you know they uh, uh, eventually pr approved 4.3 million. So we have since that point done exactly what the bond has asked us to do. So if you just want to go to the next page, I'll just explain the pages and why I put them in there. And then, then here is th this this page is just this is a page that was provided. Um, that's good. It was provided uh, to the town administrator, I believe the council president, um, but not presented to you at the last meeting. So if you look at it, the contract work for Gilbane was, was $6.1 million. So when I was saying that we've used the $4 million in bond money, we've used the $4 million in bond money. We then put up 1.24 million out of our surplus accounts. And of that, we're going to get $717,000 back. Again, could be paid over time uh, or it's paid uh, to reduce, I mean, it could be through a revolving fund or paid over time to reduce the bond payment. Uh, if you move down again, uh, this is what we think the funds were used for, uh, how they were applied. 
you know, and again, the town has 100% of the control of the money. So, um, you know, whatever, I don't know what they're charging things to, uh, but they have control over that. Um, and that goes on to going down to towards the bottom of, again, what we think things were charged for. Now, I want to be clear, we did save money. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, we came in under budget on all of our projects, but it, it, I guess keep on going. But when we made the presentation in 2018, we said we have $12 million worth of repairs. That was what was approved. And, and we knew we didn't have $12 million, but we had $12 million of needs. And so what we did was we you know, we had the bond, we got the reimbursement, we had, um, you uh, provided a uh, revolving fund of about a half a million dollars. We knew we had that. And, um, you know, we knew we had surplus. So all we have been doing is trying to move forward on all of these projects, get reimbursed, and then come back and do more projects, get reimbursed and come back and do more projects. And this, I just want to show you, I mean, this was a, this is what we gave, uh, I believe the town administrator, you know, back going 121.20 as to what we're doing with the money. And all of, all of these projects, every single one of them has been approved by the town, either through the OPM, the town administrator, um, and, and obviously you've paid all the bills because we can't pay any bills otherwise. So if you just want to go up a little bit more. Roll up, Cynthia. Up or down? Well, I guess, I guess down. But down? This, this <laughs> right is, here? This, yeah. Well, okay. just, this is what our presentation was in 2018, which was approved by the council. So, if, I mean, if, if you can go down, to, um, more to, keep, on, keep on going through, where we outlined all the projects we were going to do. And, uh, and then, yeah, one more. Ken, can I stop you for a second? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I'm looking, I, I printed. I, stop it right there. Yeah. So I, I don't have this PowerPoint. I mean, I do have it on a screen. I just don't want to go toggle back and forth. So when we had the uh, statement from January 21st, 2020, North Smithfield Public Schools, uh, can you see what I'm looking at? Yes. OK. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm following. So if we go down the left-hand side, we had revolving fund state reimbursement, and uh, it shows a line going to warm, safe, and dry. Is that correct? Yes. So that some of that money went to warm, safe, and dry. Uh, revolving. If fund. I'm answering this correctly, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. So, so let me just go back. I mean, so the the, the slide that's in front of you. Had, we came to you and said, listen, we have $12 million worth of projects that, are, that could be right approved. Um, and this is something that we were very upfront with, and this is what was approved. I think everybody knew in 2018, and I'm sure there are articles on it, that we needed substantial money to rehabilitate our buildings. Um, so consistent with this, from 2015 to, to 2018 to 2020, we followed through and did exactly what we were asked to do. And so let me, let me then continue. And again, this is more for information. Um, and I, I, let me start by saying, you know, the, the, the town council has always been willing to listen to the school department and we appreciate that. Um, you know, the immediate plans for Hallowell are unknown. And any funds taken from the schools would be parked in the town until such time as they knew what they were going to do. The school committee has authorized, consistent with the bond, the use of these funds with an approximate 35 to 40 percent reimbursement that will be rolled back into a revolving account to be used for future reimbursable projects. 
So while if we were, if you were to say, and again, we want to be cooperative, but if we take $200,000 and, and say, okay, you know, we, we saved $200,000 on the bond projects that we, we started um, in you pocket, we're just gonna have to come back to you next year and ask you for the $200,000 back because we need to do windows and we need to do HVAC systems. So we're just gonna come right back to you. So it, in, in my opinion, it makes no sense to say, oh, okay, give us some more money so that we can come back next year for you to give us the money back. Um, I, I wanna say something that's a little bit negative but our contract with the Gilbane is through the summer. And unfortunately, because of the delay in the purchase of the windows, there's not enough lead time, which means that now we have to get another general contractor to do the windows. This was already included in the cost. So I'm gonna say that there's going to be an additional cost on the windows. You know, all of, all of the funds that we are using are for the health and safety of, of, of the schools. It's all warm, safe, and dry funds. When originally, and I think some of us will remember this, when we took over, I mean, when, when the bond was floated, well, when, I'm sorry, when the bond was passed, Hallowell technically was going to be kept with the school department and used for storage. They were gonna knock the, the, some of the buildings down and use the rest of it for storage. So that was the initial, um, that was the initial plan for Hallowell. We decided that, you know, the school committee decided that that wasn't needed. Town administrator asked us to turn it over and uh, we did do that, of course. Um, I know that some people were upset by the way that we left the buildings but again, it was our opinion at that time that at least some of the buildings were going to be decommissioned. And even today, anytime in the future, you want us to clean the buildings, that's not a problem. I mean, I, I don't see that as a problem any way, shape or form, and, and we will be respectful of that. But you don't clean a building out that's going to be knocked down, or at least that was our opinion at the time. Now, I know there's some, some items in there that people think have historical value. So I did reach out to the North Smithfield Heritage Association, and they are interested in taking those, some of that property. Um, I, I know Mr. Jones isn't on here, uh, but he did tour the property. And since I think many people have, have since the tour that many people took and, and were a little disappointed, Mr. CP has been there at least twice to clean it out. And again, we, there, there are some items of historical value, um, maybe sentimental value that we really can't use. Banners, posters, you know, things like that. And again, now we reached out to the Heritage, the, the Heritage Society uh, Association and they are going to work with us on that. As I mentioned, you know, every bond, every, every dollar that we spent on any bond has been approved by the town, including the current projects that are before you. Um, you have an OPM overseeing all of our projects and the OPM has not, has, you know, I, I, I mean, I guess you can talk to them, but has not had any issues with any of our, our, uh, our programs, I mean, our uh, spending. So, so I, I think I'm gonna say it as simply as I possibly can. We were, so the bond was for a $6.144 million expansion. The bond itself was 4 million or 4.3 million. But we got it done. We got it done through additional help from the council, um, our reserve funds, and I think that we need to keep moving forward. I think that the funds we have, we need to keep on reinvesting in the schools. Um, I, I think the schools look the best they ever have, probably since the time they were built. Um, 
a lot of it is done internally. Uh, we have our people working very hard. And because we're using our money efficiently and coming under budget, I think that it's more important to sink that money right back into the schools. When we started, we were given a certain amount of money. We're not at, we, we did not ask for any additional money. We worked within what we were given. Now the council has been uh, uh, gracious with giving us also a uh, revolving fund that we can use. And these are all used to improve the schools and they look great. You know, we I think we've done everything by the book. Um, and I'm asking that you base, I mean, that, that the, the, the town council respect and, and allow us to continue to spend money efficiently, effectively, and keep on moving forward. And I, I you know, if we, you know, whatever, I, I want to be cooperative. I think how I, I think Hallowell needs a large bond or needs some mechanism to fix it up. But this isn't the mechanism. This is small change compared to what Hallowell needs. So I'm asking that you approve the windows and that we can we, we be allowed to continue to use bond funds in all of our funds to rehabilitate our schools. Thank you, Mr. President. So just and just so that you know, we do have people, I believe, from Gilbane, if you want to talk about specific projects. Um, I don't think that's what we're here for, but we'll be more than happy to answer any question you have. I think the biggest thing that we're here to, to talk about and to decide on is not, we're not here to question the projects that you're doing. We're not here to question whether Gilbane or the OPM are doing their job, whether the schools are great or not. There's $4.3 million that this council is responsible for, and we don't have a clear understanding of it. That was the point of this meeting. And, and I'm still not really seeing, giving me information at 10 minutes of seven before a meeting doesn't really give me time to look at it that well. Um, some of the stuff that you put up there, I've never seen before. I've seen the last, the last sheet that I got on the school building authority budget and project summary was dated 5-11-2020. And when, when I go through the numbers, the numbers that you're putting up don't match up with the numbers that, that are showing on my, on my sheet. And that's what's creating some of, some of the angst, I guess, and, and continuing to move forward. And so we have, we have people from that's, Gilbane. That's, our, that's, that's the issue is that we don't have a clear accounting of, of the dollars that we can easily sit there and say, okay, yep, I see this. It's, it's not a question of, do we think that you, we should keep investing in our schools? Because I think it's clear that this council, the administration, everybody is saying, yeah, we need, I know that we need to fix them. I did the original master plan in 2006 that said half of the things that we're doing back then. So it's not that we don't know that they're not needed. It's that we need to have a clear understanding of the $4.3 million that we're responsible for, as well as some of the other stuff too. And, and so when we go through this and, and you've, given, you've given a quick overview of it, based on what was the town was voting on and what was approved by the council in, in, in the school committee at the time to go forward, even you, even you tonight is like, are we knocking down Hallowell or are we keeping Hallowell? It's not even clear what was decided at that time. And, and we got council minutes that we've had included in our, in our packet that state two different positions on it over a course of four months from May to August, it changed. So we made a statement that, well, we left that stuff there because there was no reason to take it because we were gonna knock the building down. But then there were other people sitting there going, we're gonna save the building. I haven't made a decision one way or the other. I just need to know what we're supposed to be doing on this project and to make sure that what we actually budgeted for in that bond is what we're actually using the money for. And right now, Hollowell isn't really addressed in that other than 
a gross appropriation that probably isn't even adequate to do anything there that was that was stated that was going to be done. I don't know if any of the other council people or the administrator have any any comments about this. But that's what it was voted on, Mr. President. I mean, we're, we're following through what was voted on. Mr. President, I certainly have uh, information for the council, if you will. Go ahead. Um, Mr. DeJesus, could you put up what you created today, please? Mm -hmm. uh, is this something that you can send to us, uh, Mr. Hazels, the council? Did we get this already? No. No, I just put that together right before the meeting. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Can you enlarge yep. it? It's an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, if you can increase the size, Cynthia, that would be good. Yeah, uh, I'll send it, um, Mr. Zielinski, I'll send it to you. Just uh, give me a second. Get, well, the school, uh, school committee gets a copy as well, please. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Ms. DeJesus is, is managing that. Let me start by saying that, uh, as the president has said, this isn't a critique of what has happened in the projects uh, that have been managed extremely well by um, the school department. That's not what this is. It, it disappoints me so much to hear some of these things and, and to have things just misstated that, you know, somehow I'm uh, in this conjecture uh, uh, described as having um, asked to turn over Hallowell. Folks, in June of Hallowell, the school department wanted to turn over the school to the town. That was, wasn't me and my office or the administration or the council doing anything to that regard. In fact, I discouraged that from happening because the project at NSES wasn't done as yet. And the, my suggestion was that until we were absolutely certain that school would open in, and, and Mr. Lombardi and the school department can go back through and check the emails back and forth uh, on this with the superintendent and the finance department of the school uh, department, as well as ours, that uh, I discouraged the town taking it over in June or July and said, keep it until September because you may need it if something goes wrong with the project. So, you know, going back over this stuff and trying to point back five years, six years, is pointless. What we're dealing with is a simple issue of $200,000. That's the issue that came to the finance director and I in late April. Prior to that date, all we had was guaranteed maximum prices and bills that had been being paid. We didn't have a final summary as to what the cost would be uh, in a in a final circumstance in some ways we we still don't and that's okay I'm not being critical of that it's it's just that that's when we got the information so on analysis of that information I look at this and say it is the school department excuse me it is the town council's purview as to what happens with the 4.3 million dollars I'm not here to say that we should not spend money on windows or, or unit ventilators or, or any of that stuff. I'm simply here to say that the scope of work is changing and that this, because there is savings to the credit of the people involved in the project. And the, I believe that the town council had, should have the opportunity to weigh in on that and make a decision as to what it thinks is the best use of that $200,000. So what, what I, what we have for you on this one sheet is the reality of what has transpired from a financial standpoint in this project. And it's interesting to compare these as we go through. The, let, let's look at the funding first. The funding was $4.3 million from the town. Um, and and it, it is to this point, $1,794,967.12 from the school department um, fund balance. Those are the numbers that we have booked to this point. 
Um, it's interesting to go back and look at what, what has been provided to us tonight and show that the school department was anticipating back when these papers were created that they would contribute $2 million to this project. They haven't. It's 1.794967. 1 so the total funding that we have available for the project at this point is $6,094,967.12. What we've spent to date is, is the next number, 5254, and the balance available, $840,951.53. From the, the information that we have that was presented uh, to us on 420, uh, April 20, um, we construct the following, where at NSES, the project is done as best we know. There are no other bills to come in except the $50,324.77 that's listed. So from the, the guaranteed maximum price contract that was originally issued and the, the uh, cost to date and the miscellaneous expenses, the, the balance remaining is $94,551.92. All good news, no disappointments. At the high school, we have a guaranteed maximum price of $2,466,981.82. You can read the number that says what the cost to date is. The remaining work is estimated, uh, or excuse me, that, that's the balance remaining uh, for that particular contract. The remaining work, we're told, is $248,780. I have no reason to doubt that, and especially since Windows, uh, excuse me, this is the locker room uh, work. Um, <clears throat> the, the estimates to date have, have all been uh, on target, have no reason not to trust the numbers here. When you total those, the total uh, potential savings is $106,807.02. Add those together, you have a $201,358.94 balance that could be available for work as decided by the school committee and the town council. Um, the issue for me is also, to, if we can go down further, is to uh, make sure that everyone is aware that the existing revolving fund balance is $512,208.79. So, and that funding is in addition to, or uh, is unrestricted at this point as it relates to any uh, expenses re related to this project, to our knowledge. Um, the, beyond that, the school department also has a fund balance, as, as best we understand it from the um, um, audit at $447,689. Now, you know, the, um, in it, what has been said earlier, there is potentially $700,000 coming back to the town um, on the reimbursement side. So in addition to the $500,000 that exists now, there's another $700,000 that will come uh, or should come. I will uh, caution that because of the state's budget issues, who knows what's going to happen over the next year or two in terms of um, final funding. But the the plan is that the, there would be, be this $700,000 in additional um, four projects due on our schools. The, the, the reality as it relates to Hallowell, the president has already spoken a bit of, is that you know, we can easily talk about bonds. Um, I don't think we're you know, looking at any kind of chance of a bond passing this year uh, with the current atmosphere. Uh, I'd love to float one, advo advocate for one for a police station. Um, I'm hesitant to think that in this environment that we will be successful, but uh, I'm not afraid to ask for anything. But the reality is that we're potentially looking at a circumstance where, as it relates to Hallowell, that the funds, the $300,000 that you have now is the only funding you're going to see until uh, for a project that would only take place in 2023. That's a long time for buildings that already have sat there decaying to continue to sit there decaying. So the long and the short of this is simply, folks, you know, the, does the high school need windows? Absolutely. I was an advocate that the windows in the 
uh, the renovated science labs that have already been completed be changed. I, and the, the council supported that change. That is part of this cost. Um, should every other window in that building be replaced? Absolutely. The question is when and with what funding? Um, I leave it to the council at this point. You have out by every measure that the finance department and I can, can assess, you have somewhere between 201 and $292,000 available. The question is, what do you do with that? Mr. President? That's what's left at the $4.3 million? The, well, again, from the, the budget standpoint, there's $201,358.94 remaining. From the funding standpoint, uh, with 300 held for Hallowell, there's $292,171.53 remaining. Mr. In President? either case, you know, it seems to me that we have opportunity to add to the uh, funds available uh, to uh, improve and maintain Hallowell. And I'll say again, as I did last time, it's, it's very easy to continue to turn our back on that property as we have for the, benef the better part of 25 years. It's sad that the whole circumstances come down to this and no matter what happens, there, there is need to make sure that we can do something with that property. Uh, where will it come from? Um, it's up to us to figure that out. Cindy, if I could ask you just one question. Yes. On the, what's right on the computer right now, will you show the original bond issue, 4.3 million, and you show a balance of 840, you're moving the page, go, go back to the summary that you had. This one? No, right there at the bottom. There. The this one? Yes. The one that's in the square right there. Okay, go ahead. 4.3 million total. And then you show what was deducted out of that and leaves $840,000 in that, in that original bond. And 3.4 million of that went to Gilbane. So we didn't take any money out of that bond by your accounting to do the science labs at the high school. Actually, yes, we did. We did. We did because, um, can I go up for a minute? This yep. 1.7, Okay, Gilbane, we've paid um, just 5.2. It's these two amounts, and out of the out of the um, Gil, out of the bond, we paid 3.4. But at one point, there was some lab um, invoices that were coming in, and um, Lisa instructed us if we can pay them out of the bond because they did not want to deplete their fund balance. So the numbers we're seeing in that school are not, are not accurate. That's my point. Well, this is, I'm sorry. Okay, let me explain. This is only bond money right here in the bottom where I'm highlighting. Correct. This is strictly bond money. That. Okay. But we spent. So if you take the, let me We spent $5.12 million. Yeah. We spent total. Sorry, I'm having a hard time doing this with the shared. Yeah, we paid 3.4. And then if you look at these three, these four um, invoices right here that I'm highlighting, that's 316,000, those were for the labs. So the balance of the project came out of yes. the school's revolving fund. 
Yes. It started with the revolving fund and then they started to deplete it. So they asked us to take over so they wouldn't deplete the whole entire thing. So we took over the last $316,000 payments. Okay. These last four invoices we paid out of the bond and they were for the lab. That's what, that's what I'm trying to get an understanding of. Is what was okay. actually spent out of the bond and what was actually spent out of the fund balance? Be, because that's important to know. Okay. So out of the fund balance, out of their fund balance, they spent 1.7 and out of, out of ours, we spent 3.4. So if they you add those together, fund, they spent all of their fund balance. Yes. So if you take those together, the one point, I'm sorry, the one point seven. Okay, actual mm -hmm. expenses. Right, and you add our three point four. That's how much we paid Gilbain, which is these two together. Anyone, any council members got questions? Comment? And I just want to make a note that we still have a few invoices that are standing and I'm not sure if we have any out there um, that still have not been paid for like Steven Turner and STV. Um, yeah, somewhere so, approved, somewhere approved just, to his United the School Committee meeting. I know that. Right. Yeah, I just want to make sure. And I, I'm still not confident that we don't have any out there. I, I, I just want to make sure that we have every invoice possible, even if we don't pay it right away, if I just can account for it so we have mm -hmm. an accurate number. Did, did we, we not we, have a, a proven invoice for roughly $38,000 for lockers the other evening? That was a PO. That was a purchase order. Okay. Yeah, and that would be we, part of this um this two forty eight, right here. Yeah, we we awarded a bid, but we haven't paid it yet. Right. Yeah. We haven't awarded that. We awarded we haven't awarded the rest of the bid though, right? Just the lockers. Just, just the thirty eight thousand. Just for. We haven't um, awarded the rest. We haven't awarded the rest of the work on that. Correct. Well, um, the well actually I believe the 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 locker room work was part of the GMP, Mr. President. Oh right. Right. The 38,000 were just for the physical lockers, I believe. The, the, right. Yes. So that, that works authorized. The only okay. is- That's what, part of the 2.466. Yes. Okay. Mr. President, may I just ask a quick question? Go ahead. So on this document, six six million ninety four thousand uh, nine hundred sixty seven was all an amount that could have been charged to the bond. They were all approved. 100% of that could have been charged to the bond. So, uh, I mean, up to 4 million, let's say, because $300,000 for Hallowell. So, why, why, we, why were we not charging more things to the bond than for us to pay? So, that number should, this number should be inverted. That should be 4 million the top. And then the difference should be what we should have still. So I, I, I'm saying it's, 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 it's I don't know. I understand that. That's why we, we have a hundred percent. Nobody has a clear, nobody has a clear picture of how we're spending this money. That's the issue. Yeah, but we're not, we're not it's charging. We're gonna, it's not whether we're going to buy windows for the high school. It's, we don't have a clear picture of where we sit right now on the financing of these two projects. But we're not in charge of the financing. You are. Uh -huh. We're not, we're sending you bills, you're paying them. We have a contract, we're following the contract, we're sending you the bills and you're charging them to wherever. So what I'm saying is, why weren't they charged to the bond? Because the- um, Excuse me. Yes. Um, well, the bills, the, the original, agreement was that the 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 um the school's fund balance was going to be expensed during these projects so lisa was paying we were paying the bills and lisa was reimbursing the revolving account and that's where that 1.7 comes from right so we paid all the bills and sh the school was just reimbursing us in the revolving account 
So we don't pay bills unless it gets approved by the school committee. So when you say that it's where we charge it, what do you mean where we charge it? We only have one fund balance account and that's number 52 and that's our bond. And then we have 60, which is the revolving account. So I don't understand why you're saying, I mean, where we're so charging. What I'm, I'm just asking, I guess my question is, is mm -hmm. why wouldn't we charge the bond first? That these are all that bonds. was your this that you that was your decision that wasn't ours. I was just told to bill her, and I built her. She paid us. She, it was supposed to be the re okay. So it could be just a is there a first that they have fund balance first? Because I think we agree that the one point seven. Yeah, I could. I could have been. I don't. I think we have to go back. Yeah. I don't know well, I, I'm because I thought my understanding that the labs were going to come from the reserves and the NSCS was going to come from the bond. I That's agree, and, and maybe that is correct. Okay. But, but the fact, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the what the agreement was. But what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that all of those should have been technically charged to the bond. I mean, and then we were going to use our reserve funds for the for a revolving account, and we maybe we just planned. Okay, we're going to do this here and this here just for the ease of it. But I, 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 and we all agree that the 1.7 is exclusive control of the school committee, correct? So no arguing that point. What? No one's arguing that point. Yeah. Right. So why would why? I, what I'm saying is, we've already, in my opinion, we've already used the four million. Whether, however, it's calculated this way is. Not, I mean, I, I'm going to say I don't. Either maybe it was a communication error. I mean, maybe we said, okay, just for ease, we're going to charge this here and this here. But ultimately, the whole thing should have been charged to the bond first. And then the balance, should, we should have paid. I mean, that was, that was at least what I thought the plan was. We have $6 million in improvements for, with the $4 million bond, 4.3. So. Well, well to respect, Ms. Lombardi, if... And we're not arguing the point that the 1.7 is falls under your jurisdiction. But if that's the case, and we and we went out and we approved those two contracts with Gilbane, one as a one one was a GMP on the design build, and one was a GMP as a um, construction management. We didn't have 4.3 million dollars to authorize, unless you guys authorize us to use those funds to pay that. And I think that's what Mr. Jesus is, is referencing because we wouldn't have had enough money to award both of those contracts if we only had the control of the $4.3 million. That's, that's, that's where why they said into, into a, mm -hmm. I don't know, a, I don't want to say, I think that's where the confusion is coming in. Okay. That's where the confusion is coming in because we could not have awarded both of those bids unless you guys authorized using those funds to pay one of those one part of that right project. which we did and again the reason why we did that is because we'd be talking about still doing the labs not today when they're already done so whatever whatever process we use to move forward of course we move forward but at, at, but in 18 you said this is how much money you have to spend on 12 million dollars of projects and that's exactly what we're doing so I'm going to ask again that we be allowed to move forward on, on whatever plans we have that's consistent with the 2018 authorization and obviously the bond in 15 and everything else. So again, we get reimbursed if we, whatever money you take, um, and again, you know, is not going to be reimbursed. I don't know what you're going to do with it. I, don't, I mean, nobody knows what you're going to do with it because we haven't made any determination. We, this is kind of premature to even have this conversation. I mean, down the road. Now, remember, Hallowell is now town owned. So this is a school bond. It's going to get a little confusing here, I think. Council members? This is Bob Neoli. I know. I know we're saying the windows and the count doesn't matter, but I would like to know how many windows are you looking to replace and in what location, because it was in one of the online reports or news reports, they were windows in the locker room. There are not windows in the locker room to be replaced, are there? 
Um, I don't know if Mr. Seepy's on here to answer that question. I'm not that technical. Um, I can say that I believe that all of the windows that are on the lab side, this is my understanding, will be replaced. So, but but if Mr. Seepy or the superintendent can answer that, um, that's over my pay grade. I don't think he's on. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just, just looking through the list for uh, Mr. CP. The plan for the uh, replacement of the windows was to do the back side along the courtyard um, to get that side uh, done. The second piece on that was to upgrade the HVAC system over at NSES. Um, it's uh, which, which I, actually I'm putting as a priority over the windows uh, because we, in order to reopen NSES, we truly do need to have good ventilation in there. And ventilation has been an ongoing issue in that building for decades. Uh, so we're also looking at utilizing the, uh, the funds to address that issue as well. So instead of the windows, that's where you would like to use the, the money? They, they need to be done uh, both. However, due to uh, the world changing with COVID-19 and the press to reopen NSES, um, I, I, we would, the, 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 the ventilation, which it may have been, uh, I think under the Jacobs, original Jacobs report was a priority two. Uh, parts of it has, have elevated to priority one. So we're, we're looking to get that work accomplished uh, prior to the students coming back to school. That's also on one of the, the, the spreadsheets uh, for the upcoming projects uh, under the warm, safe, dry uh, and, and health and safety that uh, I provided. President, may I ask? Mr. Zowski. Um, uh, Mr. St. Jean, could you tell can you explain what the plan would be for the $512,000 that's in the revolving capital fund? The plan for those, it was the, the two project. It was the, um, uh, to get the work done on the, uh, as many of the windows replaced at the high school as we can, and then proceed onward with the, um, the heating and ventilation systems at NSES. Those, those are the next two uh, within the, uh, uh, the project scope. So that means that you have $512,000 there uh, beyond this $201,000 that is the, the budget balance or you know, looking at the, the residual of the funding. Somewhere between 201 and 292 is what we're, we're looking at in wrapping up these, these two contracts, absent windows. Um, and in addition to that, Two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. We've got five hundred and twelve thousand dollars in the revolving fund. That and there is my point: is that you know we are threadbare in terms of what we have available for working on Hallowell, where there is adequate resource available to the school department without even touching it. The balance of its its fund balance. Um, so you know, again, I I'm not opposed to windows. I'm not opposed to heating systems. My objective is to make sure that everybody involved is aware of where the money is, and what the challenges are, so that everyone can be informed and we can move on from here and not look back. Mr. Ogier, you had your hand up earlier? Yep, uh, thanks, Mr. President. I just think it's kind of crazy. This is the second time we've, we've had a conversation, not necessarily with the school department, but another area talking about bond money and. We, we can't seem to track where the money's going yet. We've spent millions of dollars. So I think there's definitely a process that's broken and I agree. I think we need to fix that process. So I do have a couple questions and you know, maybe the superintendent or the school committee chairman can answer this best. If the windows weren't done or the HVAC system weren't done, I know that was, as you said, priority two, does that impact future reimbursement from the state? So superintendent, so when we initially came to the council in 18, um, we said that we, you know, we had these programs reimbursed, but that the state wanted us to commit to keep, and superintendent, please correct me if I'm wrong, wanted us to commit to keep going. So we have to keep going or we would risk losing future reimbursements. 
superintendent and confirm that, that? That is directly from, from Ride. Uh, they, they were very clear in our meetings that if all we did were the three projects that were on the table and we didn't do anything to address the warm, safe, dry, uh, for which we, we were approved uh, uh, several million dollars in warm, safe, dry, but we don't anticipate having to, <laughs> several million dollars to address all the warm, safe, dry. Uh, we have to make a good dent in it. Uh, we can't just do the three projects and then just step away and then expect to apply in the next cycle, the next five year cycle and be uh, uh, funded. Uh, in <coughs> fact, uh, that next five year cycle, I need to, uh, I think I need to apply this year or start this summer. And the next five year cycle is going to be including uh, roofs. Uh, which I'd really like to be able to get under uh, ride auspices and reimbursements. Thank you. So, and then I have a yeah. couple more questions. Um, so this goes to maybe Cynthia and Gary. So I just wanna make sure I understand this funding summary correct. So of the 4.3 million, you're, you're saying that we've committed so far 3.4 in expenditures? We've already paid it out, yes. Okay, that, I just, just when you get a spreadsheet at the last minute, I just wanna make sure I'm following. Yes. And then, um, so, and then finally, I asked the last time, I believe, but can we use this money for anything else other than decommissioning? We're talking about using money. What was the bond money? I know it said safeguarding and, de and you know, but can we even use it to, for a study or use it for anything else? Like, I just, I know the voters passed something. I think we have to honor what the voters wanted. But again, what, what does the language allow us to do in relation to Hallowell? No. I, I have it in front of me. You want me to read it to you, Councilor? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, okay. So the local question. Um, an act oh, I saw that. North Smithfield to finance the demolition or safeguarding, that's in parentheses, repair, rehabilitation, and consolidation of school classrooms and storage buildings. Here's where it gets a little gray to me, um, including... Hallowell Memorial School, North Smithfield. So they were kind of all lumped together, if I'm reading I, correctly. I could be reading I, it incorrectly. But I, uh, if someone can help me understand this, the revolving fund, uh, the reimbursement, anything for decommission is basically off the table. We don't get any of that money back. It's only for improvements to the, to the schools, correct? Not decommission right. or uh, making safe or whatever term you want to use. That, that money is just spent for those reasons, and there's no 35 to 40 percent return on those. Correct. And I, I thought correct. that's why we were here this evening to discuss, uh, among other things, windows and HVAC systems are all good things. But we had a meeting, and I, I thought that we were going to come up. Uh, there's a bunch of people that I've been in contact with, still looking to be on a committee to say, what are we going to do with Hallowell? Uh, and really, uh, the administrator put, uh, I think, 30 to uh, correct me, Gary put some money in for a study out there to see what we could do with that property. But the, the thing that I'm concerned is what are we going to do? I was there Monday. I took my car and I drove around way to the back of the building and it says, do not enter mold, that type of, you know, the, you're familiar with the signs. And it kind of just broke my heart to look at, to look at these buildings and say, either we're going to decommission them, tear them down. The school committee, uh, school department does no longer wish to use some of that for storage. Uh, I know that when we had the public hearing, a lot of folks said, what can we use it for? Senior centers, activities for youth, all this type of stuff. But the building's a mess. And I don't know how much of it can be saved until a real engineering study is performed. We, we can't go, you know, we, we're so dependent on all these great people that step up and help us out. But I think we're really going to need uh, some type of survey performed over to tell us what can be salvaged. What should be salvaged? What's it going to cost? Um, I, the money, I, yeah, I think the last analogy I used at our meeting was, you know, if I went to Target and I had $10 to spend and I got, 40, uh, I got $4 back on it, I'd be back at Target the next day finding something that I could use or something that I needed. So I, the decommissioning, no money coming back. I get it. Uh, well, the building, 
the, the building's already been decommissioned. The school has been decommissioned. That's the term for it. It's been yeah, but Paul, you know what I you know what I mean, Mr. President. I, I understand. We're going to just but, leave it there fallow. Well, we can't. Well, that that's that's the point, Paul. Is that we need to decide what are we going to do over there. It's not whether we're going to open buildings up and we're going to make this is a, going to be an incubator for a cooking class and this is going to be a senior center. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what are we going to do today on that site? What do we need to do? And when you uh, go, well, that's what I was saying. I, maybe I didn't articulate as well as you do, but that's what I was saying. Yeah. What are we going to do? We need to we need to understand what was what was told and, and this goes back with Mr. Lombardi. Well, this is what we approved and everything. Okay, what was approved? Did you approve demolishing those buildings? Because really the state of more than half of those buildings is demolition. There's no there's nothing you're gonna do that's cost feasible to save them. It's gonna be cheaper to tear them down and build new buildings. I agree. To try agree. to rehab. Maybe other than the gymnasium. That might be the only building that's worth rehabbing and we don't know what the cost of that is. So that's what we need to understand is that when you look at the bond, the $4.3 million bond, it included taking care of Hollowell, whether it was demolishing, safeguarding, fencing, whatever you wanted to do over there, a four classroom addition at NSES, the science classrooms at the high school and the locker rooms at, and at the high school. Those were the projects that were listed in there. I'm not saying that we, that we ignore the other things. I understand full full well what's going on in the schools. I was part, I've been part of that for so long that you know I I, I agree with Mr. CP. He's doing great work and and whatnot. The windows, the ventilation system, these other things, those are outside of the bond. They're outside of the question of the bond, and that's where the revolving fund comes in. And yep, we get forty percent back on everything that we spend. You spend it wisely. You can you can double your money if you do it right. The bottom line is, what are we going to do with the 4.3 million? What are we going to do on those four projects, including Hallowell? What are we going to do with Hallowell? That's the piece that's left. What are we going to do with it? And do we have enough money before we go and do other things with those funds? That's my question. So, Jan. Again, it's just kind of referencing. I think it's kind of crazy. This bond was passed in 2015, and now we're asking, what are we going to do? I think it gets back to we need to know what we're going to do before we commit to any part of a project. You know, just, just you know, we've run into this mess before. I think it's just a, we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. I agree. I think it, it's crazy that we're, we even have to have this discussion. We should know where the money is at all times, how much is left, what's it going to be allocated towards. If things change, no one can predict the COVID-19 situation. You know, we don't even know how much money is going to be saved fully on the school side. How much are they going to get reimbursed? We don't even know what our funding is going to look like from the state. So there's a lot of unknowns that go into these. But I just think it's crazy that we have to ask, what are we going to do when we really don't have much money to do anything with that, that property at the time? I mean, we were all there. It's, it's completely or was completely in utter disarray. It's, kind of, it's really sad how the condition of it is. And to really have any other in-depth conversation on it is outside of what we advertised for. You know, we, we shouldn't be talking about we're going to use it as this idea. Yeah, it's really just about what money do we have and is the money used for decommissioning or can we use part of that decommissioning money for anything else, knowing that it's not reimbursable or if we contributed money to the school department with the bond and they got reimbursed with that, is some of that money ours as well. That's kind of what I've been hearing. It's, I, it sounds like the school department did a really great job in managing their money. And, and to point of Paul's perspective, uh, vice president, they, they got a really good return on their investment. Those are the types of initiatives that we should be applauding. But I, I, I would hate to see the reimbursement rate affected by us arguing over whether a project should or should not be done if the funds are already there to do it. We should be focusing on why did this project or any other project fall apart. That's what we really should be focusing on to prevent these things from in the future going on again in the future. Mr. President, if, if I can. First, I want to make one point clear. There, there is innuendo here that we, we haven't uh, tracked the, the cost here. Every penny of what has been spent on these projects is right in front of you on this piece of paper. The question that the uh, school committee chair asked is why was it applied to one account before the other? That's a county. And, you know, let's make sure that we, we don't project the wrong circumstance here. Every penny has been properly accounted 
and and documented uh, as to you know what has transpired to reflect what has transpired on this project. As to what's reimbursable or not reimbursable, any money that we spend on Hallowell is not going to be reimbursable. At some point, this town is going to spend money on Hallowell that is not going to be reimbursable. The question is going to be when. The, what I'm offering to you, I have to maintain, that the school department you know, at present still has $700,000 in bond funds and revolving capital funds which is more than they need to be able to do the projects that are, are talked about here and qualify for reimbursement for those projects. That is the reality. It's just a question of where you, the town council, decide that the school department should, which pocket the school department should take the money from, whether it's from your pocket or from their own. And what we're hearing from the school department is kind of the thing that I, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, we can't have a circumstance where what yours is mine and what's mine is mine. This is the town's resource that we need to take care of, including Hallowell. And we need to secure that facility. That may mean putting some new roofs on buildings to make sure that we preserve them to be able to be used into the future. That may mean you know, tearing many of those buildings down. I completely agree with the president on that. Um, that and, and other you know, security measures. That, that place is a, is a security disaster at present. We have a section for it. But we have neighbors who are concerned about, about uh, vandals setting fire to the, to the property uh, that we should take as a serious concern. We can't, again, I'm gonna say it again, we can't turn our back on that property and just say, sorry folks, all you have is $300,000 and I don't care. Uh, we've got to, you know, we, to invest in our schools. We are investing in our schools. They, they, there's $500,000 more money in there to be able to be used from the revolving fund, and there's $700,000 potentially coming back to replace that money, in addition to what we can do in the future as a community. If I can add a commentary to this, kind of broad, broad brush, it, and it, it's no reflection on School, the school department, the projects that they're doing or anything, take a step back and look at the three projects that were bonds were floated at the same time. And this is just highlighting, the Hollowell piece of this is just highlighting that none of these projects were funded properly in the bond. There was never enough money to do any one of these projects, whether it was a school bond, town hall bond and the police station or the road bond, not a single one of them had enough funds in them to do what was told they were gonna get done with. That's just reality. That's just reality. However, they got to those numbers. I'm not questioning whether we should have borrowed 20 million or whatever. You borrowed 12 million, but we said we were gonna do X number of things and we could never do any one of those things because they were never properly funded. That's what's creating a problem with this, with this project right now. We got $6 million of work and we only had $4 million of bond money. That's the reality of it. And luckily the school department had a surplus because they didn't, they didn't spend money that they got when they got, I don't want to call it a bonus, but they got, they got extra money in state aid certain, uh, and for a couple of years and they didn't spend it. They wisely threw it into a fund balance because they could control the fund balance. And luckily it was there as a blanket to save us on this, on this stuff. And so, yeah, they can continue to go forward with it. And I don't, I don't fault them one bit. The reimbursement is always going to be there. As long as they continue to do things with Ride, unless Ride changes the rules, that 40% reimbursement is there as long as they keep doing warm, safe, and dry things. 40% reimbursement on the, on the town bond, the, the $4 million, that goes back to help pay back the bond. That's housing, that's housing aid, that's the old housing aid setup. Um, so this is kind of highlighting that we went down the road to answer Mr. Oyer's question. How do we get down the road? We're down here and we still can't decide what we need to do. We can't decide what to do because we can't do what we said we were going to do because none of them had enough money to do it. That's the reality of it. We hit it with, we hit it with the town hall and we're going to hit it with the police station next and you hit it with the school buildings and you hit it with the road project. It's just reality. There was, there was never enough money to do what was stated to do. And if you go back and look at the council minutes that I had the clerk give us, 
it tells you what they were going to do with, with each of those bonds with the resolution that was sent to the state. It tells you what they were going to do, and we, haven't, we can't do what they said they were going to do. That's just reality. That's how things change. And that's why you need to come back and look at things differently. So, Mr. President, again. Still in bond. So, you know that, that we do have pools of money. Um, and, and, and the council has been gracious enough to allow us those pools of money with a plan. We know we, we don't want the high school, and I know at this point it can't be, the high school to be another Hallowell. We need to keep on sinking money in. Again, I'll, I'll say it again, that we were given a certain amount of money to do certain things. And that we, so we have access to $6 million to do $12 million worth of projects. We have begged, borrowing, and stealing to get there. So we're waiting for the 40% to come back. We're using that 40% to use it again to get 40% back. Just, I mean, it, it's kind of insane that we're changing like 10 windows at a time. We should just do it all. But you know what? We don't have the resources to do it. I mean, how, how, the windows are, are 40 or 50 years old. They're the original windows. So I, all I'm saying is just give us an opportunity to keep on moving forward. That's, that's all I'm asking for. We got reimbursement. If, we, if, you, if you say, well, listen, you know, we need some money for Hallowell. If, if Hallowell isn't safe with 300000 are you telling me that it's going to be safe with 400000 I mean, have you spent the $300,000 to, to secure it? So if, if you're going to pocket another $100,000 or whatever number you come up with, we could be reinvesting that. Now, if you said, hey, listen, we're going to, you know, the original number was 400000 You know, we're going to take it down and whatever it is, it is. And, you know, we're going to do it next month, whatever it is. But if you park that money for two years into an account and don't use it, that's harmful. I, have to say, I mean, it's going to hurt us. Any other council people? Anything else, Mr. Lombardi? Uh, no, nothing else. Now, of course, we're making this argument right now. We'll be back before you on Monday night to, I'm sure, ask you for more money again. Yeah, whole, whole different issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time. No, my, 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 my want is to figure out where we stand. And I think the, my, other, my members on the council, they see it with me that we don't have a clear understanding of the $4.3 million. We don't know exactly where it is, where it was spent. Um, even our finance, you know, I, I go back to that, to that statement that if all we had was $4 million to worry about, we never could have awarded all of those projects. We just couldn't have done it. Without, without a collaborative effort on both sides, coming with the fund balance, we couldn't afford it. We couldn't have done it. And so we need to understand what was spent. And I'm not, you know, there's 300,000 in Hallowell. I can tell you right now, my experience, even if you wanted to go in there and flatten every building in there, there's not enough money there. There's not enough money there. Not even close. So if that was the objective when the bond was passed was to level that building. You didn't put enough money in it. It's just, it's just reality of it. Mr. President, I, I'm confused when you say we don't know how the four million three has been spent. That, I mean, uh, if you're looking- Well, we, we differ, we what, differ uh, in opinion on how it was for, spent. Pardon me? We're differing in opinion on how it was spent. The school department's of the opinion we've spent it all, but when we look at the spreadsheets that we have, we haven't actually no. spent it all. No, no, we, we agree 100% with that, with what's being presented. What we're saying is that why, so, so why was, so there's $6 million in bond projects. Who, why is there this breakdown? And it could be just an accounting issue, but we've already used what the bond, we already spent more money than what the bond called for. That's what my argument is. But these numbers are 100% accurate. I'm not gonna, I'm not disputing the numbers. I'm saying that, We've already spent 
we've already spent six million dollars on a four million dollar bond. That's that's what I'm saying. It's making a statement of. Yep, that's no one. No one's arguing that. We just need to see on 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 the ledger on how much, what's left of four million dollars. That's and I don't you, think we have, you have it. You have it right in front of you. It's eight hundred and forty thousand nine hundred fifty one dollars and fifty three cents, right to the penny. But these are decisions that were made by the town, right? Well, Mr. Chairman, if I might, I mean, your fund uh, director was uh, hand in hand um, in this with ours in terms of the way that these these transactions were done was you provided money, we pay bills. And, you know, if if the council or the school committee or anybody thinks that this should have every dollar should have been split based on the um, the uh, some percentage fine but we would have had to know that know that at the beginning we didn't know that we got contributions from the school department as this project went along correct i need to defend myself because at one point if i didn't send the bill out to lisa lisa would actually send me a, an email oh i would get the check before i even invoiced her so, well you know, what i'm so i I'm think i'm not accusing anybody of anything what i'm all i'm saying is why? But you said we made that decision, but we, the town did not make that decision to use the 1.7 first. We did not. And if Lisa's on the, on the, on the Zoom, please speak up. But I, I don't think that we ever, we ever imagined that we would get this technical on spending $6.6 .6 million. It wasn't a big deal until you said it. What do you mean? What I'm saying is this meeting, not not what was done, but the, you know, I, I, again, you, I don't you spent, like to be. I don't like to feel accused of anything of anything I did wrong because I did not I, do anything wrong. I apologize if you think that I said you okay. did something wrong. I'm, all I'm saying is, I, I I I'm just trying to figure out how these number because again, we don't control the accounts. We send the bills over. Mr. President, I'll go back to my concluding comment. This is a question over what to do with the $200,000 that is unencumbered uh, at this point in time in the, well, actually you can go as high as 290, what was it, Cynthia? I can't see the final number. Uh, on the uh, funding side, $290,000 um, that is not encumbered. Uh, let's, let's just make a decision and move on because this is, um, now that's what we're deciding on is how to use 200 to $292,000 and it needs to be decided. We need to move on and get on to other things. 292 does not include the 300,000 already set aside for Hollowell, correct? Yes, it does. That is the balance of the, the funding side. Now, I would uh, just just for the record, I just want to say that we may have some more bills coming in from the project. So, well, you know, and that's <laughs> so, you know, Mr. O Councilman Osier, when you talk about we don't know where we're going uh, or what we're doing, they have it. I mean, we don't have, you know, the full picture in terms of and, and Mr. Lombardi, don't take that as a criticism. I understand that. Right. We're dealing with the numbers as we best understand them today. And the, you know, uh, I don't know how else to explain it. That is where we are. If there are other bills out there, then, you know, they should be on the table right now. All I'm saying is that we have projects. Maybe we had, maybe we had when we were approving payment of bills and we were approving all of these invoices, Gil Bain reading the pay recs and whatnot and awarding them, that we didn't ask the question where were the funds coming from? We were just told the funds were available. We didn't ask what part of money they were coming from. So maybe we were, we didn't ask the right question at the time. But. And again, Mr. President, this is, just, this is just a highly technical issue. I mean, it, it's okay, well, you know what? Um, you know, take the money out of here because we've got the money here. Take the money out of here because we have the money here. Yeah, I, nobody did anything wrong. I'm not making any allegation like that. All I'm saying is we did $6 million worth of projects and, and that was that the bond 
was allowed for four million dollars. So I would think that you would charge the bond first. Now again, we may not even have asked that, but I would think that technically the bond was charged. That's all. And the Mr. reason President. That is that the outcome would put this totally in the hands of the school department and leave the, school, the town council out of the question altogether. Your choice. Mm -hmm. Councilman, women. Doug had a question. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say to get to you, uh, to kind of piggyback off your point, um, Council President. Um, you know, kind of in hindsight, what we should have probably been doing is tracking, you know, before each project and before, you know, each contract came before us, we should have been having these discussions in point and not authorized anything until we found out what was it kind of had a true up at that point in time. Like, this is how much the money has been spent. This is how many invoices are waiting to come through. You know, we should have been having these conversations in real time. And maybe that's a, a, a tweak that we can make going forward. Um, I just think I agree. It's just getting too messy to try to sort through all this, especially when these projects last years. Um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint it. I, I have to say that, I mean, there is no other way to, to do this beyond there's a budget. The project went forward within that budget. We now are at a point where we finally have something, Councilman, that says, Here's what we can see in the way of a conclusion to this. There's likely to be 200 to $292,000 available. What do we do with it? Do we, we uh, allow it to go into windows or a heating system or any other thing on that side of the, the ledger? Or do we hold some of that, all of it, whatever, uh, to add to the resource for dealing with Hallowell? That's the question. I mean, we, we should have had something to track all along. I mean, we should have had this summary sheet all along. And if it was there, that's great. But, you know, this is the first time I'm seeing this and it hasn't even been emailed to us. And no one would, you know, start doing renovations on their house and then two years later go back to the first project they did and say, hey, you overcharged me on this. I want to do a new roof, but I can't because, you know, I think there's some savings there. Like, it, it, it just sounds like we're always going backwards to try to figure out what went wrong. And it just sounds like, in this instance, there, the solution would have been, we just tracked it to a budget. There is a budget there. You don't just write a blank check and hope for the best. We need to actually get more accountable in how we're spending our money. This is not the first project that we've had this debate on. And it, I tell you right now, it's probably not gonna be the last <laughs> until we fix the process. Keep in mind, please, that what you had here was a guaranteed maximum price contract where the contractor and the designers were working together to minimize the cost all the way along through the project. Very well done. The, the problem, or if you wanna make it one, is that you don't know exactly what the final cost is gonna be because you need to go through the project. Now, it's on April 20th, a statement comes to you that gives you a, a set of numbers that you can have confidence in because everything has been bought, every, most everything has been paid for, and there's a very small portion left to estimate as to what's left to be done. I don't think you can do it any better than this, folks. And that's why it's before you, is that you have numbers now that roll down to something that is conclusive, reasonably conclusive, and it's decision time. If I may, uh, Mr. President, to Cindy. Cindy, I'm looking for that spreadsheet. You did send it to me, this yes. current one? You did? Yes. You sent it to my email? Let me make sure you sent the right email. Zelensky, yeah. Keith AOL? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 736. I don't have it here. I got a 647 and a 757, not from you. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll forward it to you again. See, let me know. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, I think Gary was on to something a second ago. Gary, you still? Um... I'm here. Um, 
you know, I started looking at these numbers, but I'm by no means an accountant. But when we look at uh, roughly our actual expenses, and Gary said, we, we still have some out, outstanding. We don't know what they are. So roughly 80% has been, has been uh, drawn down to make to, for these projects. And the school department, somebody help me with this. The 1,794, that was from what? Their fund balance? Or that was what, uh, as Chairman that's, Lombardi, that was That's correct, that's their fund balance. Yes. Which was totally expended, right? Yes. 100% of that has been expended. Thank no. You. Uh, well, 100% of the 1.7. Yeah. Yeah, and and we're and we're looking at roughly eighty percent of the of the um, of the bond, the, the four point three. Someone uh, point out to me on this uh, on this spreadsheet because I, can't, Cindy, I was going to try to open up yours and look mm -hmm. for where is what's outstanding. Do we have that? What's outstanding of invoices? Yes, that's the issue. I don't know. Yes, because the school no. the school department gets them first. I don't get them. Well, no. They, they learn a kind of a quagmire here trying to figure this stuff out because I, I was trying to come up with some type of solution based on percentages of, a, you know, 100% paid down by the school uh, and then we're at 80%. But we, well, I'm a firm believer if we can get 40% back on every dollar we, we spend, I'm all for it. But we do need to do something with Al. And uh, I think Mr. Lombardi said that, I know, I would not shortchange what Mr. Lombardi said about going in there and cleaning and taking care of things at, at school expense. That's a big expense. Um, maybe more than what people are thinking. When I, when I see those signs on the building, do not enter mold, that worries me. That, that just worries me. So I don't know that I, we don't have enough money to do what we need to do at Hallowell right now. I, I'm at a loss for words. I'm going to check, Cindy, see if I got that spreadsheet. Thank you. Okay, let me know. Yep, here it is. I got it. Thank you. Oh, good. You're welcome. Couldn't do that if we went on Zoom. <laughs> I have two computers going. I'm going to get too used to this. I'm going to have to bring two laptops to the meetings. So, so Mr. Sorry. President, just for the record, um, I, I don't know if we have a choice with the HVAC system. Um, that's something that's probably going to be mandatory. Um, so I know that, you know, we have that 500,000, that's probably what we're going to spend on the HVAC system. But, you know, it, it's, it's my philosophy that we need to get the schools up to where they need to be. And, and I, and I get, and I get Hallowell, I get that we have to do something at Hallowell, but what is it? You know, I, I, and again, I, I, I get that probably $300,000 isn't enough, but that's what, this is what we, I'm going to say we're given or presented, or this is what in our mind, what we were doing to move forward. So, I, you know, it, it, a few years later, now, now kind of, with kind of changing the rules. Um, and, and if that's okay, I mean, that's okay. I, I don't know what to say, but. I just hate to give up money that's going to not be reimbursed and get talked somewhere. And that's really not going to make a difference. I mean, we're arguing over something that I don't think is going to make a difference. We need probably $12 million over in to, to fix up the Hallowell site, at least. We're not looking to fix up the Hallowell site, Ms. Lombardi. Don't, don't even, the, the only statement that's been made on the Hallowell site is I'm not selling it. I'm not looking to go in there and refurbish these buildings. I'm not looking to go in there and turn it into a Taj Mahal. I'm not looking to spend a lot of money. I'm looking to find out how much money I need either to tear down what's, what's useless and no good and a hazard to us right. and protect what we do have that potentially has, has useful life in the future. That's all I'm looking for. This is not some redesigned plan. Go, going back, yeah, we, do we have to hire someone eventually? Yep, to do a whole land use study of that whole facility on what potentially could be done there. That's a whole different issue. The issue is, what are we going to do with that site to take care of it, to make sure that if we need anything that's, that's usable, it's there in the future, and it just doesn't sit there and continue to go away, and the things that need to go away, go away. And, and, and we're on the same page. How can we help? Um, just uh, 
bit of information. Uh, according to the, the sheet that I have from the school department, the estimate for the renovation of the heating and ventilating at NSES is $250,000. Mr. Lombardi, are you saying that it's now 500? Wait, whoa. Superintendent, can you answer that question? You sent it to me today. That estimate was the inexpensive estimate. Um, rebuilding the systems that were in that's already in place um that there are two prices for that if we rebuild the univents in place and we you know th then then that's that 225 230 thousand dollars uh if we replace the cr control units between the uh, different ventilation systems that are in there, that adds another 200,000. We start getting into questions of what is ride reimbursable. And that is what we're working through with the, um, uh, the, the, the SBA right now. So but is fully reimbursable would probably cost about $1.2 million to do the work over at NSES. Uh, we don't have that. Uh, even at a 40% reimbursement, we don't have that. So we're looking just like we did with the science labs, just like we did with all the other projects to do the lowest cost, highest quality, maximum reimbursement uh, uh, on a project. So there, there are some moving parts right now in the NSES HVAC uh, ventilation upgrade, which we're trying to get through very quickly again while we have Gilbane on over the summer, we can, we can, um, and we get right approval, we can go, go forward and try to get that in place before schools reopen. Thank you, Superintendent. I would say if, that, if, if that's the priority, and I'm not, I'm, don't, I know what, what's wrong with the buildings. I've seen the Jacobs report. I've done, I've been part of the things for, for years and years. Um, with this COVID that's out there, and, and I firmly believe that schools need to start back up in September, just like they were pre-COVID. All the kids in school, all the kids on the buses, they need to, that's going to be a big, this social distancing, I can't see it working in the schools. I can't see half bus loads of kids. We need to, we need to stop moving, moving forward and whatnot. And if this ventilation system is that important, then we need to, we need to address it. I'm not questioning that. And, and you know, the 40% reimbursement, it's, it's almost an afterthought, really. You know, that's how you have to look at it. That if this is, if this is a health and safety issue, then you need to look at it. And, and find a solution to it. The forty percent reimbursement, you know, is an afterthought on it. Just like, but some of these other things, you know, they they come up and forty percent reimbursement is always going to be there, unless well, I don't. Nothing's always there. <laughs> it'll change in two. It'll change in two months. Uh, not, nothing stays the same at the Department of Ed for whatever reason. I've been there. <laughs> I've been through that a long for a long time. Um, we're not arguing the ventilation system. We're, we're just trying to sort through this thing and figure out, the council's trying to figure out where we sit with the bond money and what are we gonna do moving forward. It's not to stop you guys from, from windows. It's not to stop a ventilation system. Those things are in, are in your control. I've sat in your chair, Mr. Lombardi, for a long time. <laughs> and, and we've addressed a lot of things over those years too, just like you guys are doing, you know? Um, and, and you've said it, and I, you've, you've heard me say it. Those schools are in, in, are in shape right now that I haven't seen in a long time. And I credit Alan Seepy in, in the direction that he's given and, and how he's managing the stuff up there. I give him full credit for it. Uh, <clears throat> the issue right now is, is that bond and, and what we're doing with Hallowell because it's a piece of that bond. That's just the reality of it. It's a piece of that bond and the council needs to determine what are we gonna do now? It's not really so much as it, you know. It's not so much a school committee issue. It's it's our issue right now. But we need your input because it is it is a it's a combined project.
Mr. President, if if I'm hearing that the the focus has changed from the window project to the um, NSES um, ventilation project, um, then uh, I um, um, I'm really happy that we had this discussion. Um, it points out exactly why we're here. We have between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars remaining in this <laughs> collective fund for this project. What do you want to do with it? That's the question. And if we have a circumstance that the um, that involves the health and safety of the children at NSES, our largest population in our school system. Isn't that the high, shouldn't that be the higher priority to make sure that that gets funded? Now, this is news to me, but if, you know, as much as I want and need to see as much as we can get to Hallowell, you know, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, there's still $500,000 in the, the, the school department's fund balance, or excuse me, um, revolving fund. And there's been a forecast of a $300,000 surplus for this year. You know, folks, there's a lot of money here. There are multiple challenges. Uh, it's important that we stop and say, okay, what's priority one? What's priority two? And what's, what are we going to use to fund it? That's why we're here. The, the, the focus was Hallowell up until a few minutes ago where the superintendent says that we need 1.2 million to, to fix the HVAC system. I mean, that's brand new to me. No, no, no. He said that if we were to redo the HVAC system, it would be 1.2 million. We think right. that we can do it for a half a million, I believe. Well, I understand that. But, no. you know, the numbers are, you know, I've got 250,000 on a sheet here. And, and I, I'm, I'm hearing numbers now that go up to a million two. Um, so when know, we do roof, when we do roofs, they're going to be 10 million. I mean, uh, and that's not going to be an issue here. That's that the, that will be another day. There'll be another day for a lot of these things. What do we do with the 200 to $300,000 that we have on the table right now that this council had not had opportunity to make a decision on? Council members. Mr. President, Mrs. O'Hara, you know, you can think with your heart, you can think with your head, but with this problem at, at NSES, it's a no brainer. The health and well being of those children has to come first. Um, do I wish we had more put aside? Do I think, I, do I wish we could have done more? But the buildings that can be saved from not becoming another Hollowell has to be done now. Otherwise, we're going to have more and more Hollowells. That's the nature of this town. No, oh, due respect, Mrs. O'Hara, none of our schools are getting close to being the condition of Hollowell. Not NSES, not the high school, certainly not the middle school. They're not getting close to being in, that, in those conditions. Right. I'd like to return something. They do, they, do need, they do need to have constant attention or they will become a Hallowell. Well, that, that's exactly what I mean. We've been penny wise and pound cold for all time. Mr. President, if you go back four years, we were going in the wrong direction with, with the schools. They would not be, they, you could see the high school becoming another Hallowell had not we get support from the town council, the town administrator, and sink, you know, and have Mr. CP there and sink money into it, fix it up. I, I think that that was a big problem four years ago. One of the key pieces of that though, Mr. Lombardi was the state stepped in with Title IX with that money that's the revolving fund. That was a big component of this allowing us to do more work and in in to get more stuff done. That was a big component of that when they changed that. We, we didn't get any Title IX money. 
mean that's, that's that's what the revolving fund that's what that's what the governor called it it's title nine i believe is the number is the name they gave it and we're only getting reimbursement i mean you know maybe that's we get, the yeah but we get that we, you get that 40 percent reimbursement on a rolling basis so you spend a million you get four hundred thousand back that was all set up about that same time and and that's what i'm saying that's what allowed yeah. us to, to take those steps and to stop moving forward because yeah we were in that same position that we're in that we didn't have money we didn't have money to do these things and and that's what's plagued the town for years that mrs o'hara was talking about you know they, we never put money aside to, to do the stuff that we need to do any other council people mr president mr walensky uh, I, I like my fellow colleagues, it's news to me that uh, we have to be considering uh, HVAC cubic feet per, per minute changing of air. Uh, I'm 100% supporting this. This is a health issue. This goes to priority number one. A 40% reimbursement on that. Uh, I would just, you know, I'm certainly not an HVAC expert in no way. I just know when a building's comfortable. Well, we have to think about, you know, Miss O'Hara had some concerns about our other buildings turning into a Hallowell. Mold can bloom very quickly. And I'm, very, I'm going to so certainly, whatever the school department needs uh, for my vote will be to help them to get HVAC systems, in, the most healthy uh, HVAC system we can get to protect our kids. It's if, just a, it's a no brainer. If, if I could just step right in for a second. Uh, Mr. Seepy is a man of few words, but enormous talent. And he called me with an answer as opposed to going on unmute and speaking directly. So the HVAC system he's looking at right now at NSES is 350,000. Uh, that includes the rebuilding of all the unit vents in the classroom and the replacement of the Johnson controls. Uh, so he, he's estimating 350000 for um, NSES. Uh, he, he feels that, uh, you know, we, th there would be enough funds uh, to be able to do the high school plus NSES and not have to sacrifice one over the other. Now, if you would like uh, to ask Mr. CP to unmute himself, mm -hmm. um, you know, he could uh, perhaps answer some questions directly. Mr. President, I, I, if Mr. CP could elaborate and uh, just fill in the details because now we've gone from one school to two schools. I get it. We have to do it. Uh, let's let's have this discussion this evening uh, so we know. Uh, I, I, let's have the discussion. Mr. CP, uh, he's going to give us more detail. I'd, I'd certainly like to hear it. Well, what Mike said is true. To rebuild the uh, Univent at NSES is 350000 and that includes redoing the controls, which are all over the place in that school. That's at NSC. That's just the classrooms only. And then we would we would, would replace 40 windows at the high school. That would be the back in the courtroom where we renovated more classrooms, more than the science rooms. We also renovated other classrooms. We would uh, replace 40, 40 windows. I'm that sorry, be? Mr. CP. Did we? <clears throat> I thought we were discussing HVAC units uh, for both uh, NSES and the high school. Well, we're talking no, no, HVAC just, just, for NSES just, and uh, and windows for the high school. Is that it? School. Correct. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you, Mr. CP. If I might ask that the uh, 40 windows, the budget for that is the 210,000. Where are we with? Yeah. Yes. I think it's 210,000. Yes. Thank you, sir. So the total. With the savings with the. Uh, with the budget we had and the savings, we figured we could do both projects if, if the council allowed us to use the funds. The, the total of those two would be $560,000 or thereabouts. Correct. And, and Mr. CP, you don't anticipate any, uh, any concerns with the HVAC unit at the high school at this point? Uh, at this point, no. I mean, the units are running. Eventually, they're going to be, need to be rebuilt and replaced also. But the high school is in a lot better shape HVAC-wise than the uh, elementary school. Thank you. But if you notice, in the elementary school, there's always, it's, a, it's a damp building. And one of the reasons why is there's not that much. The ventilators are not working at all. You get it has always been a damp building because of the location where it was built. Uh, yeah, we've yeah, had yeah. problems there. And, uh, it's, and, it's, yeah. and it gets worse because the dampers don't work. So you can't get any outside air in. 
yeah. and all of the controls are bad. So that that's that's one of the that's another reason. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So we count the members. Five hundred and sixty thousand dollar cost is five hundred thousand dollars in the the revolving account and two to uh, three hundred thousand dollars left in this project budget, a total of eight hundred thousand dollars. Alan, sorry, say that again. And you, do you uh, do you expect any? Uh, are we pretty much done with the billing in uh, for the uh, um, labs? Uh, there could expansion. be a couple of small. A couple, of, a couple of small bills, but we should be done by now, yes. The numbers we gave you, the estimates, that includes everything we know that's going to come first. So can you tell me how you did the locker room so cheap? The locker rooms, we uh, bought the lockers ourselves, having them installed by another party. Uh, we're, paint, we're just painting them, we're doing the showers, and we're painting the girls' locker rooms. Uh, really not that cheap it's a quarter of a million dollars yeah, you, I think it was much I think the estimate originally was was much more than that and I know you're doing it in-house a lot of the work well some so. of them yeah but, some of, but I'm not sure what the estimate came. I don't know what they were doing for the locker rooms with that estimate when I got there we uh, we changed some of the things there and we came in and we were able, able to do it for less than two hundred thousand dollars thank you the original estimates before Alan came on board uh, was 500,000 for the locker rooms. Oh, and there's a correction. It's uh, 57 windows for $210,000, Gary, not 40. Thank you. Yeah, so and that would be to do the back courtyard. I think we walked through the building. I've walked through the building with you, Gary. We showed you all the windows that we want to replace in the new classrooms. We, we have walked, I don't remember. <laughs> Alan. Yeah, when I showed you the sign, well, anyway, when I showed you yeah, the sign, I mean, yeah, and I, you know, uh, there's no argument that windows need to be replaced. Um, that, you know, the question is just priorities here for the company. No, I understand. Okay. Right. What's the council's pleasure? Mr. President, can I make a recommendation? Certainly. The um, we have needs everywhere, uh, without question. We have many, many needs, um, and there is no want to to upend any plan or any progress. Um, I think what we've hit on tonight is a. I don't know that everyone feels the same way, but it certainly catches me that while I want to do something with Hallowell, there is no. Uh, there should be no confusion that any uh, chance that we would not properly fund the opportunity to improve the unit ventilators given the circumstances of health that we now understand are so important to maintaining health, uh, we have to do that. Um, the, so with that, I mean, I, I think the priority needs to be the, uh, as to what the what I would recommend the school department go forward with is to make sure that it gets that work done or can get that work done. And then let, let's talk about funding beyond that. Um, so just this, this final circumstance, we've got somewhere between 200 and $290,000 available. Um, I'm gonna recommend that, that there be some split of that between an addition to Hallowell um, and uh, the, the balance be, uh, committed to the school department to um, first make sure that that ventilation problem gets managed and secondly as many windows as possible after that. Um, the We still will have many, many windows left in that building to do. Uh, this is an end all, a be all, end all circumstance. What number, I mean, I, I'd like to see $100,000 added to the, the Hallowell Reserve the, to make the 300,000, 400,000 as it was in the, you know, some of the original considerations, which uh, in these numbers would leave an additional $192,000 available from the funding side uh, to add to what's, uh, to remain available to the uh, school department for the additional projects that it contemplates. 
You've heard a recommendation from the administrator. Was the council's pleasure. Mr. President, can I, can I just ask a clarifying question? That's why I make sure because okay. the audio kind of cut in and out a little bit. So is, was the administrator's proposal or recommendation to use half of the balance, the 192, to, well, it's, two, it's 292, but to put 100,000 back towards the restoration and then use a split between their revolving account and our balance left? Is that what no, I No, I think, I think his recommendation is to take Hundred, put it toward Hollowell, and the balance goes to the school department. To right. the okay. fund. Stays with the school department. Uh, okay. Stays, That's to make stays sure with the project, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I heard clearly. Thank you. So uh, help me. I'm looking at. I got, I got too many spreadsheets running now. So what would the balance be for Hollowell if we did that? Four. Four hundred thousand. Uh, so it's not two ninety two. We'd add another hundred. Be three ninety two. No, the, the 300 is the current reserve yeah. for Hallowell. Yeah. We'd take the, the 292 is the, the current funding balance. We'd take 100 of that and add it to the, make the 300, 400, which would leave the, the 192 as the, the funding balance, which makes it closer to the 201 that is the, the, the project budget balance. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? What is the pleasure of the council? Question. Um, all right, so on these buildings, if we start tearing down buildings at Hallowell, is there asbestos in those buildings? Yes. Yes. Okay. What There's a full it asbestos plan that's already wall. been that's already been approved for those buildings. Okay. What did it cost us at KD to remove asbestos? I'm just trying to get a ballpark of what that would cost. Kendall Dean, I believe, was about ninety thousand dollars. Okay. But just asbestos remediation. All right. Councilwoman, though, it's very difficult to, to make any kind of comparison. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the, the materials are different. Um, and it, it's, it's, you know. It's in the floor tiles, it's in the caulking, it's in some of the siding. And, and so there, there's, there's right. asbestos in Hollywood because it was, Kendall Dean was built as bricks in wood. And, right. and there's no, there's, there's, there's little to no tile was in there. And, but there was still, the cork that was hold, the the mastic that was holding up the chalkboards had asbestos in it. <laughs> it was it was those type of things, and and they're gonna it, it's an issue. I know it's an issue at the high school when they do the windows. They're gonna want to replace those windows. There's asbestos in the corking around those windows, so that's part of the issue, and I'm sure it's figured into the cost because we're already going through this. Like like uh, Mr. Rizowski said, when we authorized the change order on that project change the windows in the lab it was almost like okay here's a trial run of what we what we can look forward to going forward and i think that's what mr cp's done is okay we've changed so many windows as we fixed the labs now he has an idea of what it takes and now he's going to go through and do the whole courtyard thank you Any motion from any council members? Can I ask Mr. Lombardi, would you support that recommendation? Um, I think I, I would support, I mean, I, I, if there was a plan, I would feel much more comfortable. And, and, but, but again, I, I want to be fair with the town. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to, to, to say, hey, listen, you're on your own. But I, you know, I'm trying to advocate for the schools the best of my ability. So, you know, I don't know if anybody else wants to wants to get on and make a comment from the school committee. But um, go ahead, Peg. Uh, yeah. So, you know, so I'm I'm kind of with Jim on that piece in that the 40 percent. I know. I know we'll continue to get the 40%, but we don't, we don't know how long that's going to go on. 
And right now we know we're guaranteed to get that money back to do things that have to be done. Even if we do just a handful of the windows, it still means next year we're going to have to do another handful of windows and the year after that. And then, then we're going to have to go to the H, you know, the HVAC or, or anything else. And right now we have the opportunity to spend this money and get the money back right away. And it just seems like in the long term, that's a better investment, no matter how you slice it, whether it's for Hollowell or for anything else that we do for the town. Um, that's just, I mean, that's just to me, that's just logically what makes sense right now, since we don't know what we're going to do with Hollowell and it's just going to sit in a bucket somewhere. We can spend this money and we can get the money back from the state because, you know what, right now the state is given that. We don't know what's, look, look at the $800 million in debt. What happens when the state in a year says, guess what, we're not giving 40% back anymore. We don't have the money. We can't do it. We've lost that opportunity. Mr. President, my, my recommendation would be providing $192,000 more against the $210,000 estimate that would have included all of the windows. I mean, <laughs> this is, um, it is, I, I'm done. Basically, what, what the administrator recommended and what I'm hoping that at least we put on the table for a vote and we can discuss it, go up or down so we know where we're going. Um, he's making a recommendation to, to split that in, in two thirds to one third, which would in essence give the school department $700,000 in the revolving fund to do $560,000 worth of work that they, that we all know is important. And some of it is, is more necessary probably than, than, than others. Um, so we are giving them the opportunity and, and then some to, to accomplish what they were looking to set out to do as well as protecting the town because to be, to be honest with you, once we get through the budget, I want to, I want to have the administrator go through this and we have a plan by September. So we're <coughs> going with Hallowell. We're going to know exactly what we're doing with Hallowell by September. We just got to get through the budget. I mean, I, I'll make the motion that we take 192,000 or let me rephrase that. I'm going to make a motion that we take $100,000 of the balance that's left so that we have $400,000 to do Hollowell and the remainder is, is going to the school department's revolving fund to do their windows in the HV, the windows at the high school and the HVAC at NSES. In addition to their 510,000, it's in the revolving fund. That's a motion. Second. Here. Second discussion. Second by Mrs. Zwanski and Mrs. Barnioli discussion. Mr. Zwanski. Yeah, uh, Mr. President, let's just prioritize this that uh, initially, I know we can probably have them running concurrent, concurrent, but I would like to see the HVAC units uh, fixed. If it's gonna come down to a matter of funding, we didn't appraise this properly. I'd like to make sure that we do the HVAC first and then go into the windows. And then roofs in the future. You well, know, roofs are all a whole different issue. I mean, Mrs. Bonnelli, did you have a comment? No, I just seconded it. We just seconded it. Yeah, so with, with that discussion, just put a, a, a clause, not a clause, a little mm -hmm. a statement in there saying that this additional funding would certainly be used for the HVAC system at NSES first, an additional uh, whatever uh, revenue is left over, whatever money is left over balance, we could put it into window work at the high school. Well, I think I think that the superintendent, the chairman, and, and other members of the school board are listening, and I think that they'll agree that they'll understand that we'd like to see HVAC be the priority. Yes. And, and they're both priorities, but HVAC is, is the top priority. Yeah. I fully understand that, Mr. President. Thank yeah. You. Uh, according to Mr. CP, 350000 for the air, and then we'd have 57 windows. Hopefully, we can do it all and then get 40% back. Let's do something else. The nice deal. Uh, Mr. Vadney, can I just confirm the motion? I missed the last number. You had said it was the rest. I was of moving. I was moving 100,000 into the Hollowell. Right, and then you said a number because, that was 500 something thousand. That's the number I missed. 
and I don't see it on the spreadsheet. So I just want to get that number right. What number? The 560. Yes, yeah. you did mention 560. Yeah, what was that oh, number? Right? The 560 was the total, was the total of the two. Oh, that had nothing to do with the motion. That was just, no. we're putting, we're putting, <laughs> we're going to make sure that they have almost $700,000. Okay. Account to do okay. 560,000 worth of work. The motion was to move 100,000 of the balance into the Hollowell project. Right, and the rest will go to the school to revolving to funds do, to do those things. And in the that. balance of that, because we we not sure that it's 190, that it's 292. Okay, standing. I got it. The balance will be going to the revolving fund. Got it. Thank you. And Mr. Zwinski and Mrs. Bottomioli seconded. That I have as well. Thank you. Okay. So in all this fun we've been having, Mr. President, can we restate that motion? I have motion to move $100,000 of the balance for the total of $400,000 for Hallowell and the balance will go to the school revolving fund to go to the windows in HVAC. HVAC being the priority. Priority, yes. HVAC being the priority, got it. Any other, any other discussion by any other council members? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mrs. Bartimoli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadnay? Yes. I think this was, uh, it, it was a little drawn out and, and maybe contentious, but I think we did find out more than we, than we did before. Like Mr. Zelensky said, this was helpful. We, none of us knew that the HVAC system was such a priority. It's, it was close to us. And so we really can't address things if we don't know them. So maybe we need to meet a little more with the school committee. So Mr. President, thank you very much. Uh, thank the town administrator and the uh, town council. Um, the, the HVAC system is something that's new to us um, or newer to us. Um, I know the superintendent may have told me that there was a problem a week ago without a number and then we moved from there. So it's new to us. It's not like we mm -hmm. were sitting on it. Yeah, um, no, no, I'm not. It's it yeah. just that maybe we've, if we met more often, we would, we'd have a better understanding of where we both are going on certain things, so. Sure, thank you. Mr. Thank Badney? You. Mr. Zelensky. I didn't think this was that contentious. We've seen more uh, hollow blues than this one. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm on the other side of a few of them, but. <laughs> and again, Mr. President, just for the record, uh, you know, this is how it should work. I know that in the past, the school committee and the town council and the town administrator really, you know, I'm going to say hated each other because I was part of some well, of the it, was, it used to it used to be us and them, Jim. It yeah. used to be us and them. And, and you know what? I never liked it when I was on the them side of it either. Right. So I, I appreciate um, working with us um, and, and advocating and listen, listening to us. Thank you. Thank you all. I mean, there are tough questions we have to face. We face them. Let's move on. That's good. Thank you. Mrs. Bonamioli. Um, Mr. Lombardi, I just wanted, um, because I know when we said about the condition Hallowell was left in, and I made the statement like a bomb scare and they ran away. I, it probably wasn't to that level. I think I was just more surprised seeing items, brand new boxes of Crayola crayons. There's a World Globe in the library that has a plaque on it that it was donated and that things like that were not taken to the new school or to the new building and that any kindergarten teacher could have used those Crayola crayons and there were other manipulating tools for math when they're learning in the kindergarten and first grade. And those things should not have just been left. That was more what I was upset about. Because and, and it's all dollars. You. It may not be a lot of dollars, but it's still dollars that we could be using at the school. And, and thank you. And, 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 you know, obviously the school committee uh, did not, you know, move anybody from there. And as soon as we were alerted to it, um, Mr. CP was down the next day looking or, or within the next few days, looking at, at it. I think he's taking some stuff out. He's taking more stuff out. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. You know, obviously we want to work collaboratively and uh, thank you. In that, in that same vein, Ms. Lombardi, that there's stuff in the, in the school and I know that it, it's not useful 
put our children in the schools. There were reader, book readers and, and stuff like that. But there may be third world countries that could, that's far better than what they have. And yeah. Rather than just throwing it away, we might want to look at finding if there's places that we can send this stuff that it would be helpful and advantageous to, to those less fortunate. Yes. Great idea, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, let's see if Mr. CP is on here. No. Mm -hmm. If he is, tell him I'll be at Hallow. Uh, I am taking notes. Thank you. Anything else from the council? We thank you, thank you, Mr. Lombardi, the, the council members, the superintendent, Mr. CP, and the rest of the administration staff um, for taking the time tonight to discuss this and coming to a good resolution, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Right Can motion to adjourn, please? Oh. oh. Good night, Mr. President. Good night, everyone. Good night. Let's adjourn. Let's adjourn, Paul. Let's motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. My Mrs. O'Hara. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.